G'day scrappers. I've uh, finally got myself a wire stripper and uh, yeah thought I'd uh, give it a little uh, trial and uh, try and get used to it see how we go with it and this one's a, a reasonably good one a um, couple reasons why I like it uh, there's kind of two versions of this there's your original and then there's the Chinese copy they're pretty much similar there's a couple of differences I'm not sure about the blades but uh, I know that uh, this is an original uh, brand it's the Enipat that's um, this brand is only available in Australia but you can actually buy the same machine pretty much anywhere um, just uh, depends whether you want to buy the uh, the cloned Chinese version or the original Chinese version <laughs> um, but yeah the blades on these ones are manganese and uh, you know mang manganese alloy so they are pretty strong blades uh, I'm not sure of the copied one whether they're manganese or they're just straight out steel so yeah I'm not sure about that so that's one of the reasons why I bought this um, original kind of brand. It's a little bit more expensive. It's about $100 more than the copy. Um, but uh, another reason is the actual wheel. So this turning wheel here, um, it's quite a, a large wheel, whereas the, um, the copy version is a little bit smaller wheel. And that might be okay with your regular um, wire but once you start to get the thicker w cables running through you've got to be pretty strong to turn it if you've only got a four inch diameter wheel so this one's um, pretty sure it's six inch diameter and obviously uh, this uh, model or, or type of stripper also comes with the motorized version I didn't want to get the motorized version because well it's a motor it requires power most of the time I'm going to be using this is just to strip a few pieces of wire every now and then so I want to mount this onto the workbench and have it there ready and as I get a piece of wire that I want to strip I want to put it through run it through I don't want to turn on the motor and obviously electric motor um, you know eventually it could burn out and um, it would be too expensive to replace you'd have to just replace the whole thing these uh, blades are changeable as well there's 10 blades so we've got 10 slots here uh, we've got eight round ones two flat ones and also there's a crushing slot so I'm not sure what I would use the crusher for so basically it's the same thing it's just crushes between the wheel and uh, with no blade so it might be for some very fine kind of stuff don't know if I'll ever use that one but uh, the flat ones I'll definitely use and all these uh, yeah I, I like the uh, the 10 it weighs 25 kilos or about 55 pounds um, or nearly 60 pounds uh, so it's a quite a heavy little unit uh, they look bigger when you see pictures of them online but they're only about uh, a foot a foot across and about six inches thick so but uh, yeah very heavy little unit and this side is where the wire comes out obviously so you can see the two rollers there with the uh, blades the blades are just uh, rounded blades quite sharp actually so yeah eventually these blades will wear out and you know It'll be a bit of uh, mucking around to um, dismantle it, get the blades out and replace them. And I'd imagine it wouldn't be really cheap or anything. So, so the more you use this kind of machine, the more it's going to, you know, eventually the blades will wear out. And the only, I'm still trying to get used to it myself and uh, trying to get the see what it's all about but uh, these two uh, handles here are to adjust the height of the blade 
so if you want to put a little bit more tension on the wire that you're putting through you obviously push it down a little bit screw it screw it down tighten it up a bit or if there's too much pressure on the wire and it's cutting too too deep then you you can also release it so I've kind of just set it up at one way and we'll see how we go it just depends on the different wire that comes through um, so I thought I'd give it a little bit of a a trial and then maybe I'll do a uh, sampling of m the more common wires and uh, do a bit of a, a way up and see whether it's worth stripping some wires or not um, I'll think about that later but for now I just want to try this out and and see if it actually uh, actually works and I doubt that I'll be using many you know using this really big one much um, I do get the odd piece, really big piece, that will come in handy. Um, I don't strip all my wire. Most of the wire that I prefer to strip is, uh, you know, good solid core copper. You know, when I get this stuff, sometimes I, you know, pick it up from industrial sites or wherever. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is the kind of wire that's really worth stripping. Uh, obviously... Because I do e-waste, um, you know, very common wire is the PC cable. Uh, I really doubt that this is worthwhile stripping. But what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll get like probably uh, 10 kilos of this. Um, and, uh, and then I'll strip it all and see how much I get out of it. But I doubt that, you know, this isn't really worth it. It's more better off selling as uh, medium grade insulated copper wire but anyway let's get to it I'll get some uh, samples of wire and we'll see how we go with this uh, Enipat uh, wire stripper if you're interested in uh, having a look at the uh, the specs and the details of this machine or one very similar uh, there's a link at the bottom in the description to one of these on Amazon check it out if you want to just uh, uh, see what they're selling for in America or wherever you are um, but uh, yeah this particular brand the inner pat I'm pretty sure it's only available in Australia but there are um, other versions that you might want to search for if you didn't want the Chinese copy but the Chinese copy is you know it still does the job the only thing is it does have that smaller handle but if you really got big items you just want to make sure that let's turn around here if it does have the small handle just make sure that you not only have the obviously the cog on the handle but you also have the bottom screwdriver attachment or drill attachment so I'm just waiting for my battery to charge up but yeah you can um, attach a cordless drill or a power drill would be a power drill is better because um, you could you can then lock in the actual the trigger and just let it run on its own whereas uh, if you've got a cordless battery operated drill you got to hold your hand on the finger that's the only thing but I'll, I'll give that a go as well when I get my battery back from the charger okay so I'll try a few easy small pieces um, only about a foot long so that's the core there it's um, a reasonably good good wire to strip so I'll just give it a go and what I want to do is I just want to test one to see whether I've got the right height otherwise I'll you know drop it down a little bit or lift it up if it's uh, there we go we just want to check that it's uh, cut right through but it hasn't cut too much to squash anything so we're not wearing out the blades as much so there we go we've got the copper and it's yep it's uh, pretty much perfect <laughs> that's <clears throat> that's about as easy as you can get and there we got our beautiful clean copper 
ready to uh, put into the furnace and melt us, make us some copper bars. Or sell it to the scrapyard if you just want to cash it in. And there we go, we've got some nice clean PVC. What to do with this PVC now? Well, probably um, throw it in the bin, but uh, it would be nice if there was someone that actually took this PVC to recycle. So I've got another piece that's uh, identical. I'll just turn it around. Just so you can see it coming out the other end. All right. There we go. Stripped clean. Look at that. Beautiful. So, as easy as you can get, really. Um, nothing left in there, obviously. It's all clean. So, well, it works. <laughs> um, I've got a few different types. I've got a really long piece that I might try. Uh, I've got a few of these that is uh, a little bit more higher grade, thicker, but it's uh, kind of got two, two components of the insulation. It's got the outer and then it's got uh, more of a plasticky inner before we get to the actual copper. So this is a really long one. So 12 foot. We'll see how we go. So I'll put it into the, the next size up. And before I continue on, I just want to make sure that we've cut all the way. Okay, so you can see the, you might be able to see down here there's the first sheath of uh, PVC and then there's the plastic underneath we just want to make sure that it's cut all the way through and I can see it's probably just gone through so just to make sure it goes through that I just want to give this a half a screw on each side just so we can um, make sure that it goes all the way through because we've got 12 foot of it all right so let's give it a go here we go It's hard to tell whether it's it's actually stripping or not. So I'll just get it from the other end. What we might do, oh, it's a bit hard to uh, to do it under the camera to just see if I'm in in line. So as you can see, we get out this and we got the this secondary plastic. Oh yeah. Let's cut through that as well. We just want to get the first bit out. I might come back, bring the camera back a bit. Okay. Oh, it's, this is as easy as pie. Just slide straight out. Well, I can't get much easier than that. I could do it even, you know, in one or two foul swoops, but I'm trying to stay in the camera view. So, here's our double insulation. P 
PVC and just straight out plastic, all clean, all done. And look at this. Twelve foot of pure copper wire. Look at that. That's <laughs> that's fantastic. How easy was that? Saving cutting with a knife and all that. So you know, every time I, I get a, a length of wire like this. You know, you can just run it through quickly and bang, you're done. Uh, that was great. Here's another version. It's got the, um, again, it's got PVC, then plastic on the inside. It's slightly lighter grade. But this is uh, what I'm... I just had to go uh, focus out a little bit because it was a little bit too close. Um, but this is one concern that I've got now. I've got a really long piece here. Okay, so as you can see, it's it's not straight, it's not flat, it's all you know, sort of like kinked and bent. So I just want to see how the machine goes with this kind of stuff whether it straightens it out easy enough or does it get stuck um, because you know it's going to be a, it's a waste of time if you've got to sit there and straighten you know 20 foot of copper wire out so we'll give it a go so I'll just straighten out the start just so we've got one length to go by and just check to make sure it's gone through both yep I reckon I can just yep all right Obviously, I've got the machine unit comes with bolts to bolt it down onto a, a bench. Um, so obviously, it's going to be much better when it's bolted down. So it's not going to move around. Got a little bit tangled there. Okay. So that took a little bit of bit more effort it's a little bit harder and we just want to get the start the only thing it didn't do is just that little bit on the end okay so this is a uh, a little bit thicker core well it's it's not as many but they're slightly thicker just come out a bit okay oh yeah piece of cake And look at that, two parts of PVC, so, you know, to cut through with a knife, 
would take a long time. All right. Copper, free copper. Look at that. About three pounds of copper there. Wow. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> and there's all our clean PVC that we can dispose of or, you know, if you had a, a lot of it, you might want to find a recycler that would take it. I don't know. If you're going to have much luck, what do you do? At least we've gotten the, the most important and valuable commodity and asset, resource if you like, pure copper. Put it back into the system by selling it to the scrapyard or, like me, get a furnace <laughs> and... Uh, Play around with it and make some copper bars and so on. All right. So yeah. Um, now that was with the the handle, and I can see straight away what the uh, the people that were selling this were saying. This is a six-inch handle. If it was a, a four inch handle, that last cable that I done would have been really hard work. Definitely would have to probably use the drill and a, a power drill maybe. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was starting to get a bit of work, but if you only have like, how often do you get this stuff, you know? You, you, you know, you usually you'll get one length of it, so. Um, it's not so bad with this, but with the little four inch, if you, you do get a system, the cheaper version with the four inch, you might want to put some kind of extension onto it to give you more leverage and, uh, more like the six inch leverage. The only design flaw with this is that once it's mounted to the garage, to us, to your workbench or wherever, the, this wheel is almost at the the same um, height as the where you're mounting so uh, you want to mount it onto some kind of block because you're it's too close to the bottom right because I think originally it was just designed for the four inch but they've um, they got rid of the four inch wheels and got six inch ones made all right um, let's have a look okay so the other type I've got is the, your flat uh, domestic household wiring cable. Um, there's all various ones. There's two core. This one's three core. So it's got two bigger ones and one uh, smaller one in the middle. And but it's flat. And uh, this is still worth stripping. It's got you know still got good copper wire through it. Uh, the only thing is we want to obviously separate, take off this white part first before we can actually strip. So that's why here we've got the two flat cutters. So use the bigger one. And we'll see how this works. Because uh, this would be pretty handy for a start. At least we can get rid of the outer insulation and then we can start working on this the smaller wires in the smaller thing so I just want to give this one a go and see how it uh, how it works I 
think I might need to you kind of got to adjust it to each kind of because this one's kind of slipping and I'm not sure whether it's too loose or too tight ah, I think it was too too loose ah. started coming out a lot easier at the end all right Bring the camera back okay yep that's what we want so we've got the three wires separated from the main insulation sorry about all the camera movement too easy piece of cake there we go insulation done now we've got our three pieces of cable here ready to go beautiful i might just get this really small one try the smallest nice Get our starter. Look at that. It just peels out like butter. Oh, and it's actually fun peeling it out. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Milbury copper. Wow. Clean insulation. All clean, nothing left. Oh, this is going to be really good. And um, the thing that I I get quite often, and I've got quite a lot of this, is entire spools of copper wire. Now I could try and sell this, but. Uh, it's just too complicated to try and sell this. So this is again a twin sheath. So I want to um, again get the the out, outer sheath out first, separating our two wires. So we've got a, a real long piece here. I'm not gonna do that now. Instead. I'll just, I'll take a three foot sample. So there's our twin core wires in this sheath, outer sheath. So again, we go into the flat, the smaller flat version, and see if this works. So you imagine that, um, that multiply by that entire spool and this would be a lot of saving time so we've got the outer sheath all clean gone and now we've got our two core of wire so that's really good and um, what I just thought about was uh, this single core wire now. This, uh, you could actually keep some of this single core wire because it's really heavy gauge. Could be used for domestic reasons. But it's also started to cut. So it was probably a little bit too, too low. I could have raised it a little bit. And I, I'll do that. But it's already cut through just a little bit of one of them so that's an indication that for the first stage it was a little bit too low 
So just ease it off a little bit. And ready to go. All right. Well, I'm having fun. <laughs> um, that's probably about it. The only uh, other thing I wanted to try was the drill. So let's give the drill a go. And I'll take off the wheel attachment. Put the screw back on so I don't lose the, the nut. I mean, so there's the wheel. So it's a nice six-inch, six-inch wheel. Pretty heavy duty. Okay. So I'm just going to use uh, another one of these ones that I first used. It's the dual core and 12-foot long pieces of cable, or sorry, not uh, dual insulation with one one stack of cores so and we'll get our trusty drill and I think it's best to have it just on um, speed one rather than speed two we'll see how it works Okay, now because the cordless doesn't have a, a automatic trigger, I've got to hold the trigger on. Well, if that worked, that was as easy as it gets. come out a little bit here wow that, that was awesome I loved it hopefully I got it deep enough well we got the first one for sure oh yes look at that 12 foot of this all the way oh. well that was exactly what I was hoping it would do it was uh, fast effortless and so easy it was certainly a lot easier than cranking the handle Wow all the way clean clean insulation beautiful copper wire another 12 foot of pure copper cable into the collection look at that just awesome and for crafty people want to do copper wrapping and uh, crafts this wire would be really good for arts and crafts and big lengths of it would be awesome all right well really impressed with uh, the drill in that case and um, definitely only need uh, speed one speed two would be just a little bit too too powerful um, I think the only thing left is for a real heavy gauge wire okay now I don't think this is going to be um, good enough for the drill I might have to do it by hand but I'm hoping okay we've got some really heavy duty thick stuff here it's got uh, five different cores of uh, wire in there and it's also it's uh, quite thick insulation and I've got about seven or eight foot of this length so obviously I want to split this and get out all these different cores so we'll leave, we'll do this one as the last one for this uh, wire stripper test let's give it a go
Wow. Now, just come out a little bit. Again, I apologize for the movement of the camera so much, but it's, uh, uh, let's see, okay. So, the first try, it wasn't, it was just deep enough, yeah, but then again, it probably wasn't. So I'm gonna give this another go and adjust it properly. So, it wasn't um, pushing down enough, so I'm going to give this two and a half rotations down. Let's try this again. Give it another shot. Well, I actually used the biggest one. Maybe I should have used the second biggest one. Wow. Okay. I felt that. So I used, I went down to the next one. I think I used just the first one was just too big of a slot. So you can imagine what size copper cable this would get. But here we go. Look at that, it's got all this paper, tape, obviously got the insulation, so all this, and I'm glad that this paper didn't get, sorry, um, yeah, I'm glad this paper didn't get tangled up in the actual machine, so that's all done, beautiful. And what we're left with is five beautiful pieces of copper wire still got a strand of this paper stuff in there sorry about the angles i just can't see whether i'm in the camera but um okay so we've made a start here beautiful look at that that's as quick as it go now and that was probably yeah, because I put it in the smaller one, it did cut through some of the insulation, so I didn't have to go that, I didn't have to actually uh, adjust the height, but it's all trial and error, you know, so I could have uh, released it back two and a half, and uh, left it at that. Wow. So there you go. Awesome. And that's it, just a cordless drill. And that's exactly what I wanted when I've got these long pieces, the cordless drill. Otherwise, I'm happy with smaller bits just to use that. All right, guys, well, uh, that was exciting. That was a bit of fun. I enjoyed that um, you know I don't know how this video is going to turn out and whether it was a good showing of this uh, a wire stripper but um, you know it was the first go you know so I haven't used it at all before right now so um, you've witnessed the um, my trials just as I have but anyway as I said, if you're interested in a wire stripper like this, check out the link below in the description of this video. And um, there's a link to um, uh, similar to this version on Amazon. Just if you want to check out the details and what it's all about, 
um, how much it is, so on. Check it out. Here in Australia, um, this particular one uh, has gone up since I bought it. It was about $350 Australian, and now it's gone up to about 400 420 or something. So it has gone up a bit in price. Um, and uh, for a couple hundred bucks more, you can get the motor attachment to the side. Uh, but like I said, with me, I prefer not to have a motor because it's just another component that can go wrong um, and blow out. And then once the motor blows out, then it, you probably get rid of the whole thing. Whereas this one, a nice manual one with the lever, and you also got the drill attachment. That's all you need. And I think in the US, on Amazon, you can get the cheaper version for about $200, $220 or something like that US. So that's not bad. If you do get uh, quite a bit of copper wire, big copper wire, well, um, it'll probably pay for itself in no time uh, if you uh, value your time. Um, I like it. It's just an interesting toy. And uh, it's just um, when I get my new workshop, uh, it'll be a nice addition to the workbench and uh, just something that I can always have and uh, because I'm not going to be using it that much it should last me quite a long time probably forever <laughs> all right guys well keep scrapping get out there and chase your copper that's what it's all about these days stockpile it hang on to it you know don't necessarily sell it all all your good nice clean copper it's probably worth keeping on to rather than selling to the scrapyard that's what I do anyway. I only sell the, the dirty copper, the rubbish, the good stuff I keep for myself, for my own projects, for my hobby of melting copper bars. All right, guys, keep scrapping, have fun, and I'll catch you next time.